Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's me, your Broadway buddy, Ben Cameron. Uh, of course, you know me as the creator and host of Broadway Sessions. Right. We were just talking about this right there. Uh, and we are here tonight in the digital space for a very special Broadway Sessions. Over the last couple months, we've made a point at Broadway Sessions to make sure we're using our platform to benefit people uh, in need, to raise awareness, and to support uh, our communities and communities uh, in need of support. And we're very happy to be doing this this evening uh, with our very, very good friends at an incredible organization, Broadway's Babies. Um, this is an incredible educational uh, organization that provides arts education for underserved youth um, from New York City to the entire world. The work that they have done is spectacular. And of course, uh, the work that they do uh, comes at a cost. And uh, tonight we are here to uh, support Broadway's Babies uh, and their Rise 20 initiative, uh, which uh, we're going to be re-airing an encore presentation of Lift Every Voice, which aired originally back in June, uh, which has more Broadway stars than you can shake a stick at, as well as some incredible young people uh, from the Broadway's Babies community. So we're very, very, very excited to have you here with us tonight. So just sit back, relax. We're going to pop up the donation screen where you can uh, send any money that you have available and uh, with your heart, uh, make a donation to the Rise 20 initiative for Broadway's babies. And I could sit here and yammer on and on and on about it. And you know how I like to yammer. But I'd like to bring on a couple of very special guests quickly before the concert begins who can tell us a lot more about Broadway's Babies and what they stand for. So please welcome from Broadway's Babies, this is Katie and Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Hi. thank you for having us. <laughs> hey, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hey, Katie. Hey, Ben. <laughs> we won't know. Uh, thank you guys for doing this. We are so excited to be uh, collaborating with you on this. Um, I think the first thing I'd like to ask is to just get the, uh, the basic jam of what Broadway's Babies is. What are we about? Yes, Broadway's Babies partners with schools and community organizations around the world who are serving underserved youth and who do not have access to arts education programs. So we partner with these amazing communities and we bring in music, theater, dance, poetry, all these classes along with the Broadway community to give them a complete education so that these youth don't fall through the cracks. And one thing that I'm really impressed with, with Broadway's Babies, Ben, is how far the reach mm -hmm. Broadway's Babies is. Can we talk a little bit about uh, how we're, we're so expansive and who we're able to reach with this? Katie? Yes. We began in India, and so we we work with a boarding school in India. That's actually where Ben and I met teaching. And then we expanded into creating a conservatory program in Haiti, where we have Haitian teachers that teach all, you know, dance, music, drumming, art. And then we came to our own backyard, which actually we were surprised has one of the largest problems that you can imagine. It's the most segregated school system in the U.S. in New York City. So we work with the Urban Assembly School System here in New York. And it's been incredible this year, just how much we've been able to reach the youth just throughout this time through the new virtual platform, which is how this virtual concert kind of came to be. Yeah, now um, I wanna ask you guys, one of the uh, the catchphrases, one of the slogans involved with Broadway's Babies is live in the orange. Yes. Uh, what does live in the orange mean? <laughs> so live in the orange, is yes, our main catchphrase is one of our core values. And we believe there's three ways to live your life. You can live in the green, which is easy, not really pushing yourself, taking it lazy, not challenging yourself. You can live in the red, which is danger, pushing yourself too hard, where you're gonna shut down or give up. Or you can live in the orange, which is that space of growth. It's that space that we want everyone in our classes to live in all the time, everyone from our board members, to our teachers, to our administrators, to our students, to our school partners. And we also believe that art lives in the orange. That's where it gets made, when you're pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. So it's a great way to check in. I freely give that advice to anyone watching tonight to check in. Are you living in the orange? Are you taking it too easy? Are you maybe pushing it too hard and need to bring it back? Finding that sweet spot. I love that, um, let, that we all lived in the orange. 
Uh, Katie, I just want to hear from you. Um, over the years since Broadway's Babies has has been in effect, can you give us an example of of a moment where you've really seen a young person's life changed, um, where you went, "This is why we do this." Yes, we actually had um, in our first year at Urban Assembly, we had two students who were very interested in music and singing. And it was at the time where there were the Parkland shootings. And these two students ended up writing one of the most incredible songs um, that we actually did, you know, performed at one of our galas with uh, John Rua from Hamilton, who did the rap in the big section. And they ended up writing this amazing song called This Time about their feelings about gun control. And one of those students ended up graduating and now is is you know writing and making music and bringing that into her life and also just kind of taking a stance in her own self to be able to really focus on expressing her own thoughts and feelings and it's been kind of incredible it was incredible to watch her blossom through that process and to now still send us plays and things that she's writing and you know continue through college which is really exciting that's so exciting and you know i gotta say in what well, i think we can all agree a fairly troubled world that we live in these days um uh arts education is so important. It's so, so vital, it's so vital and can change the trajectory of people's lives, whether they're going to the performing arts or not, it, professionally in any way. There's so much to be gained from an arts education. One of the things that's really exciting that Broadway's Babies is able to do is really bring the Broadway community together in support of their incredible initiatives and programs worldwide. And they do that with the help of their incredible array of Broadway ambassadors, um, which is, everybody, which we're going to see tonight. <laughs> Absolutely everybody has rallied around. This is such a beloved organization. So we brought on one of those Broadway, uh, Broadway ambassadors here um, to talk to us a little bit about his experience with Broadway's Babies. So let's bring on Vishal Vaidya. Hi. Hi, Vishal. Hello. Good, Good to see you. you. So, so, so you've been involved as a Broadway ambassador for Broadway's Babies. Um, and I would just love to hear from your point as kind of a spokesperson generally for the Broadway communities and Broadway actors all around. What's so special about Broadway's Babies that makes you want to be involved? Oh, there's so many things. Uh, probably the community. I think when you're in the hustle of the theater, uh, I think, you know, you can be very focused on your own goals and things. And even if you're in a show like that ends, right? But I think what Broadway's Babies does is give you the fulfillment of community and also giving back because, you know, I think for all of us, the reason we're in this is because we had such a formative time with our arts education. And like you said, it's not just about going into the arts, but it's about the qualities that it instills in you, your confidence, um, community is kind of everything for me. That's the reason I do theater. And so being able to talk to these students, see them blossom, um, hear them sing and make music and, and see how that impacts their lives, their, um, their social skills, their leadership skills, and all of that is so fulfilling. Um, and it just has such a, the reach is so big that it really feels like it's like this radical, uh, thing with a global impact, which is really exciting. I like that. I like, I like radical. <laughs> I like, I like radical these days. Um, I love that. I feel like so many people agree with you and that's why you have so much great support. So uh, to everybody, what can the people who are watching tonight expect to see in this encore presentation? <laughs> so we have students from all of our programs around the world performing singing, dancing, and theater original pieces, Broadway favorites, alongside um, Broadway stars. You'll see Vishal um, reading a poem written by one of our students in India and many other things. Katie, do you want to add anything? Yeah, aside from that, this is just our students' artistic response. We gave them, they were in classes through the pandemic. And so because of that, we asked them, what do you want to do? And they just wanted to be heard. They wanted to be seen. So a lot of these are just the things that they decided to express and create during their classes. And um, so it's a variety of thoughts and feelings from our students straight from their hearts and their minds. And some of them needed to laugh and some of them needed to be really, you know, have a, a space to really express. So you'll see all of those things um yeah alongside our broadway performers who are supporting them from all over the place so it's a it's a special special show 
I love that. And now just tell us about the Rise 20 initiative. So Rise 20 is our back to school campaign. Um, we are providing, have been providing consistent and regular virtual arts programming, virtual education since the pandemic hit. We were one of the first programs to start back up in public schools, offering this consistency. Um, and it's so important right now to the youth of New York City. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the news, but every day it's something different, a different start day, a different virtual model, a different hybrid model, everyone's staying home. We're not starting till October. The teachers don't have enough money to get paid throughout the year. It's, it's a giant mess, it's a giant mess. So it's so important that we're there for these youth um, providing consistency, providing safety, providing a space to be able to trust what's going on in the world with all of this chaos going on. We're able to offer our classes because it's virtual to 10,000 youth. Um, and it only costs $5. For every $5, we can provide another class for another student. So a little bit can go a long, long way. That's incredible. Um, well, I will pledge to you right now, I'll be donating throughout the show this evening. And uh, what I want to do to uh, for our audience is to encourage everyone who's watching, dig deep, $5. <laughs> what, $5, Bob? Yeah, and $10 is two students. I mean, <laughs> yeah, three. Absolutely, and, the, and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> um, think about, just spare, I know it's gonna be tough, everyone, but spare yourself one pumpkin spice latte a week. <laughs> you're, you're gonna make it, you're gonna make it, I promise. Um, so throughout the evening, you'll be seeing the link of which you can donate. It'll be scrolling across our screen. It would look a little something like this. Wow. Oh, that's the power of technology in our stage. Magic. Um, so please, if you're in a position to do so, please make a donation. Um, it means the world to these kids and to all of the artists that support them, artists like Vishal. Um, <clears throat> thank you so much, you guys. I think uh, let's stop talking and let uh, let these voices be heard. Let's lift every voice, shall we? Yes. Yeah. I'm so happy and proud of the relationship Broadway Sessions has with Broadway's babies, and um, we look forward to many more. Everyone, please enjoy. Let's press play. And this is Lift Every Voice. Or it's still me. Bye. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Sierra, and I'm coordinator of the Broadway's Babies Music Fellowship at the Shanti Bhavan Children's Project in Tamil Nadu, India. The students we work with at Shanti Bhavan come from urban slums and rural huts. They go on to professional careers, breaking the cycle of poverty in their families in a single generation. We at Broadway's Babies are committed to providing these children in crisis with a quality music education. It is our hope that through music, we are able to provide these students a unique and healthy outlet to express their emotions and creativity. Although we've been challenged to rehearse and create music virtually because of COVID-19, we've also been able to grow together in unprecedented ways, developing a stronger bond through this virtual process. Hi everybody, my name is Pavitra. I'm a graduate from Shanti Bhavan. I currently work in HR as a graduate trainee for Mercedes-Benz Research and Development India. Singing has made me more confident as it has helped me explore my vulnerability. It has also helped me learn to accept myself as well as others for who they are. bright canary yellow I forget every cloud I've ever seen so they call me a cockeyed optimist immature and incurably I have heard people rant and rave and bellow that we're done and we might as well be dead but I'm only a cockeyed optimist and I can't get it into my head I hear the human race is falling on its face, and it hasn't very far to go. But every whippoorwill is selling me a bell and telling me it just ain't so. I could say life is just a bowl of jello and appear more intelligent and smart. But I'm stuck like a dope with a thing called hope, and I can't get Michael Yuri. Victoria Clark. Sierra Bogus. Shereen Pimentel. Brandon Uranowitz. Laura Benanti. And Santino Fontana. And I stand. 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 I stand with. I stand with Broadway's babies. Against racism. Against racism. Against racism. Against racism. Against racism. Hi, my name is Katie Fockle. And my name is Ben Houghton. And we are the co-founders of Broadway's Babies. When we first met in 2015, teaching music at the Shanti Bhavan Children's Project halfway around the world, we witnessed firsthand how the transformative effects of a quality education can change a child's life. We were moved to create Broadway's Babies, founded on the belief that everyone should have access to a complete education, which by definition includes the arts. When we returned home and began extending our programs to New York City, it quickly became evident that a lack of access to quality education is not just something that happens on the other side of the world. It is right here in our own backyards. 
You would think that the greatest city in the world would have the greatest schools in the world. But in fact, the New York City public school system is the most segregated school system in the country. And allocations of its resources, including those for arts education, guidance counselors, healthcare workers, and sports are starkly divided across racial lines. We are committed as an organization to stand against racism in all forms, especially within our schools. And we are honored to support and stand alongside the organizations who have been doing this work for years. One of those organizations, Teens Take Charge, is a student-led movement for education equity in New York City. We are honored to present the testimony of rising 12th grader and Teens Take Charge member, Miriam Diallo, joined by our youth from around the world as they raise their voices for a better tomorrow. His only dream was to come to America and my only dream is to leave. He came to a country where opportunities seemed abundant, but couldn't see all the recipients look the same. If you work hard and keep to yourself, success will come your way. America is the greatest country in the world. I was optimistic because we were in the land of opportunity. But as I looked into my hands and saw the cards that were dealt, all I had was a scrap of paper that wrote the word psych. As I turned to the other kids, all with a homogeneous background, and they had their parents behind them, handing them the tools to build a plane. But I and the other first generation kids, the other black and brown kids, the other disadvantaged kids stood in what was actually an alleyway forgotten by the world. We stumbled into every wrong choice with nothing to guide us but our judgment. In America, we were black. Slavery, reconstitution, and Jim Crow walked behind every young fellow that looked the part. Incarceration and inequitable options lay below their feet, and we were no different. We claimed sanction in the hood, went to schools that we didn't know were underfunded, competed for opportunities that we didn't know were right, and gave full trust into a system that failed us. Baba, my dreams are too big here. I remember in elementary school, we recited the Pledge of Allegiance, sang the national anthem, and we never forgot, lift every voice and sing. My third grade teacher once asked us, does anybody know why it's so important to lift, sing, lift every voice and sing? When we didn't know the answer, she told us to remember those who fought before us in the fight that, like Dr. King and the fight that still must go on. But teacher, what are we still fighting for? Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves into motion. Like how a single word can make a heart open. I might only have one match, but I can make an explosion. history in 2007 as the third African-American to be promoted to the rank of soloist in two decades. How did you feel when you found this out for yourself? Uh, you know, it's, um, it's been such a journey. I'm approaching my 20th season with American Ballet Theater. And, you know, there was something in the moment, I think, when I was promoted to soloist that was so vastly different from when I was promoted to principal dancer like a decade later. Um, but when I was promoted to soloist, you know, I didn't have a lot of guidance. I didn't have a lot of, of you know, examples to look to that had been, people that had been in that position that were of color. Um, so I think I was a bit more just kind of like stunned, but I also had this, where it was like, no, I, I, think, I think I belong here. 
but then once I was promoted, there was no momentum and there wasn't like an added boost of support. So I think that, um, I just kind of was like numb to it. Uh, and the fact that you, you put out that there were, there were two other black women who had been soloists at American Ballet Theater before me. And what maybe affected the way I felt about my promotion was that I didn't know that because our history as black dancers is often not even recorded. Um, and so I remember someone in the company mentioning to me, Julie Kent, who was a principal dancer at the time and had been in the company and watched these two black women be so. And she said to me, you know, all these people are writing these articles and saying you were the first, uh, the first soloist ever, first black soloist. And, and she said, no, there were two before. And I was like, how do I not know that? I was Googling it, couldn't find it anywhere. And so I, that's just been like a part of my mission now is to like, well, I'm working on a black ballerina history book, but some, somewhere that it's tangible for us to learn about our history. It's not just in ballet, it's in, in America. Um, but being promoted to principal dancer, that was, a, I mean, I had a full on meltdown and was, you know, that was a different story. Um, but it's, it's been, you know, every obstacle and every um, incredible thing that's happened, I've learned so much and I feel like I just want to apply it to my career and making it easier for the next generation, making it easier for you guys to be black artists, to be black and brown artists. What do you see in the slum? I see hard work. My father working as an auto driver to send my brother to school. I see pain. My mother losing her mother at age two, her father at age 30, and her brother at age 40. I see no role models. My brother being pressured into gangs and smoking. I see dreams being snatched away. My sister finishing college and marrying to be a housewife. I see selflessness. My aunt working as a maid in three households to feed her family. I see violence. My uncle being murdered. Leaving his wife and three girl children. I see lack of education. My grandfather having stage four cancer and not knowing what it is, I see sacrifice. My entire family agreeing to send me off to boarding school at age three, wishing for me a better future. One that none of them ever received. <laughs> what do you see in the slum? I see love kindness I see family and missed opportunity hi my name is Juanita Castro Choa and I'm Broadway's baby drama teacher this semester has been a beautiful learning experience for all of us one of the things that I learned the most about our students was that they were missing a place that they could express themselves Unfortunately, they don't have classrooms where they could go hang out with their friends. So for me, it was very important to create a space that they could speak, that they could voice all of their emotions, that they could express the challenging things that were going on with them at the moment. Finally got the part. I know, I'm so fabulous. <laughs> oh my God, no, but I can't speak English. 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 Where, now, where's that vocal cord that I was supposed to meet? Hello, Barbara Roberts. I will call you Miss Roberts. But if I get mad, I will call you Barbara. All right, let's get started now, shall we? Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Leather? Wait, what was it again? Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Not letter, leather. Can't you do anything right? I'm sorry. English is not my first language. You can't even do a simple vocal exercise. How am I supposed to teach you? I'm the sorry. Disculpame. Me. I don't understand you. What are you saying? Speak in English. Can't you be any nicer? God, I can't speak English. I'm your vocal teacher, okay? You must speak English. What We're not in it? Mexico or English. Guatemala. Okay, we'll start off with water. It's easy. You should be able to do it. If you mess up, then I really don't know what to do. Water. Okay. 
Get your cup ready. Would you like a cup of tea, sir? Get it on the of the test, sir. What? If you're feeling frustrated and you're thinking I'm jumping in, forgiveness is key because we're fighting something way bigger. We'll never lose, we are winners. I'll be the roots, you be the tree. Pass all the fruit that was given to me. Legacy, oh, you're part of something way bigger. I am from the grass, from seeds and dirt. I am from a busy area. All you can smell is a nice fresh flower sitting by the window. I am from the used and burnt logs, from my sisters' and mother's stories and divine recipes. I'm from arranged marriage and good luck times for the New Year's, from moms and pops. I am from fairy tales and magic, from conservative households where my mother plays a major role, being the superhero of my life, in my heart and my soul. I am from the loudness and stubbornness that has came from my whole entire family. So true. Not just a speck in the universe, not just some words in the Bible verse. You are the living word. Oh, you're part of something way bigger, bigger than you, bigger than me, bigger than the picture they framed us to see. But now we see it. It ain't, ain't no secret, no. I'm from a room from the floor in a bath. I am from that place that is all less crazy. A place that helped me gather my thoughts, but at the same time makes me emotional. I'm from arguing voices and tough love and from Pratus gossiping. I am from Mexico and Mexican dance is traditional music from my home country. I am from the garden. You can feel the wind when it blows. I am from photographs, from soft blankets and my mother's cooking. And from visiting temples in me and helping people. If you feel insignificant, you better think again. Better wake up because you're part of something way bigger. You're part of something way bigger. I'll be the roots, you be a tree. Pass all the fruit that was given to me. Legacy, you're part of something way bigger. I am from the yellow rice that my grandma cooks. Once you take bites, it brings back childhood memories. I am from rituals and sleeping outside under the trees during the hot summers. I'm from sorry doesn't mean anything and don't go outside because you're a girl. I am from the time that my little brother came out of my mom, but he wasn't breathing and he almost died. My family was crying, even though I was only two, but I was crying too because I didn't want to lose him. I'm from an uncle who passed away last year by food poisoning who got drunk without any realization of what he had consumed. I am from the water, the black rose, whose long blind limbs I remember as if they were my own. Has your race and your dancing ever had a conflict within each other? Huh. I don't know if I've ever been asked that before. That's a good question, Anais. Um, you know, I've always been very, you know, I was raised by a single mom, one of six children. And, you know, though I'm racial, I was raised that, you know, I'm a black woman. Undoubtedly, I'm, that's how I'm going to be seen and treated. Um, and so I feel like I was always very comfortable and confident in that identity um, before I was a dancer. So I feel like coming into the ballet world, uh, I'm so grateful that I got equipped with that understanding of who I was as a Black woman when walking into such a white world that I didn't really have that conflict. You know, if, any, if anything, maybe other people felt <laughs> that my interpretation of how I heard music because of the way I grew up and the music I grew up listening to, I just looked I when I was performing maybe the same parts that a white person would be dancing. And so I think maybe it was more of a conflict within other people who were watching that couldn't really understand why I looked different other than the color of my skin. So I've I've always been just so proud to to be who I am and to be from you know the background that I'm from 
and um, to represent so many who weren't given the opportunities that that I've given and that I have, and, and I'm just so I have so much pride in in all of that. Hi, my name is Sean. Um, Fourteen years old, born and raised in Queens. Pronouns he, him, and or she, her, and. Why do I tell the story? I tell the story because I know there's a lot of other people like me and I feel honored just to give them the smallest representation or happiness or confidence by just seeing someone like them. I want to spread positivity and spread, spread light and spread the fact that you are who you are and you are who you believe you are meant to be whether other people's opinions contradicts with yours, it don't matter, baby. Whatever you think you were meant to be, be that unapologetically. Be you unapologetically. If I can help at least one person have the confidence to live in their truth and be the fabulous human being that they are, then my purpose is fulfilled. <laughs> It's been said and done. Every beautiful cloud's been already sung. And I guess right now here's another one. So your melody will play on and on with the best of all. You are beautiful, like a dream come alive. Incredible, a centerfold miracle, lyrical. You saved my life again. wondering if you wanted to go out with me to see a movie later there's some pretty good ones oh, shut up excuse me i'm just politely you could cut the crap now what do you mean jordan told me he told me everything i know that he was cheating on me with you i know you two were sneaking around behind my back both of you were betraying me we're best friends but that obviously means nothing to you obviously you don't care about me at all you don't understand. When were you planning on telling me about this? Oh, well, you see. You weren't going to tell me, were you? Of course I was going to tell you. Oh, yeah? Oh, when? Yeah. After Jordan and I had been going out for a year or what? Hannah, how could you possibly be putting all this on me? You act like Jordan had no part of it, any of it. You know you always wish that he was the perfect boyfriend, but he wasn't. You got way too attached to him, and when he rejected you, you couldn't handle it. You can't accept that you aren't. How dare you say that to me? You're actually blaming me for what you did? So naive. I bet he didn't tell you the rest of the story, did he? He didn't tell you that he wasn't only with me, but there were others. I mean, he and I actually had some of a relationship going. Yeah, a relationship. While I was his girlfriend, that was probably a really great relationship the two of you had, wasn't it? Sneaking around my back doing God knows what. Real fun, huh? Egan, I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want to hurt you. You did. 
You didn't want to hurt me. Well, guess what, Hannah? You did. I don't know if you expect me to forgive you or what. I expect you to have compassion and be a friend. a friend. And that's what I expected from you, too. But it doesn't always work out like that. You have humiliated, betrayed, and hurt me beyond anything I can express. I can't forgive you. I can't trust you. I never want to see Jordan again. And I never want to see you again. Egan, please. I'm completely disgusted by you, by what you are. I don't even want to look at you. Just go back to Jordan. You two and the rest of his girlfriends can live happily ever after without me. Hannah, leave. You know, I'll still be here for you if you ever decide to forgive me. Bye. <laughs> yeah, right. beaten down, struck between my eyes. I find it hard to breathe, for there's no dust in the skies. As I stumble to my feet with hardly any strength left to stand, the wind wails death torments in my ears. The sun stands blindfolded by the clouds. There's devastation in my soul, which takes peeks at the world with dark in her eyes. I feel so hopeless inside. How do you think I'll survive? How would I make it through the brutal battle against mankind's white legacy, through the spectacle of violence, pain, and terror as a vulnerable yet resilient refugee in exile? How could I shadow past to the freedom that exists in the limelight of my life just to be liberated once again? to regain what was ours. I'm burning inside just to be liberated once again and to regain what was ours. One thing that I learned about myself is that I'm actually good in art and reading is actually fun. I'm afraid that I don't know when's the next time that I want to be able to travel to Colombia to see my dad. I think that this moment is historical and it can be painful and it can be uncomfortable, but it is absolutely necessary for all of us to move forward. I'm going through some things right now, but I can't wait to turn 16 at the end of the month. I can't wait to stumble into a New York City coffee shop and get a chocolate chip cookie and a latte and people watch. I feel heartbroken about a lot of the sad things that are going on in the world, but at the same time, I feel very hopeful to see people coming together. Our country makes me sad, but the people in it keep me hopeful. This is America. Don't got you slipping up. Look how I'm living up. Police be tripping up. Yeah, this is America. Guns in my area. My area. I got the strap. Now they always say congratulations. What gives me hope in this time are all the people that I see standing up for each other, looking out for each other, taking care of each other, coming together. That's what's going to get us through. Today, I'm starting to let go of being a people pleaser. I'm tired of tiptoeing around people's feelings, and I'm not willing to dampen my light anymore. I didn't have prom, senior night, or anything, but I just committed to college, Virginia State University, class of 2024. It's a celebration. Thank 
got my children I can't hold them now They may not be here But they still mine I hope They know I still love them
My name is Sharon Lovett, and I'm the Partnership Coordinator for the Urban Assembly Academy of Government and Law, one of Broadway's Babies partnering schools. In May of this year, Broadway's Babies was thrilled to launch our new scholarship program, Better Tomorrow. While our programs already serve hundreds of K-12 students globally, we wondered what more we could do to support them as they pursue their professional dreams, and Better Tomorrow was born. Through Better Tomorrow, we offer college and educational funding to students around the world. Our scholarship recipients, known as the Better Tomorrow Scholars, receive both financial support and professional mentorship from the Broadway's Babies community. With your help, we hope to send countless students into their Better Tomorrow. To learn more about our scholarship program and meet our Better Tomorrow Scholars, visit bettertomorrowscholars.org. Now, we'd love to share with you the moment we revealed to our very first 2020 Better Tomorrow Scholar that she'd won. Art education is very important because in order for kids to understand certain things in the world that they may not be able to ask their parents or older siblings, they can find it in art. There's a little girl watches her mother struggle every day to make ends meet, but then she goes to a play and see that it's a Cinderella. She may think, oh, I aspire to be a Cinderella. She's able to dream and have that sense of hope. If that beautiful, amazing dancer could be Cinderella, I could be Cinderella too. I remember my first dance in front of my whole school and I was so shy. But after that, I was so relieved and I walked with a confidence that I never had before. You have to be able to do much more than just know how to do two plus two. So I feel like if there's more classes like that, a lot of students like me will be more independent and mature before they go to college and start life in the real world. Thank you for this scholarship opportunity and I appreciate it. Hi, Sonny. Hi. I didn't know everybody was going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just wanting to meet with you, all of us, because we really wanted to meet you. Yeah, 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 we really wanted They cannot be taught. They're born with you. And we wanted to let you know that we are giving you the Joseph L. Dion Scholarship. You will be getting $1,000 for your college education. Yay! Woo! Congratulations. So I really appreciate it. I did not expect this at all. But I'm thankful because even though you said that this is not taught, like I literally see a leader in all of the people I've been around for four years or more. So mm -hmm. y'all basically taught me how to go through situations, how to be more professional. Right now is a, like a terrible time and a lot of things are going on. And I'm just glad that y'all look at me as so much and I'm just so thankful. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Today my father died. The whole day I could tell something was wrong. When I asked why my father was in the hospital, my mother told me it was because he had a very bad cold. But I had many colds and I had never been taken to the hospital before. Plus the whole day I kept hearing people whispering. When they finally told me that he had died, I didn't know what to do. The last day I saw my dad was the day he picked me up at his Orange Nova to go to one of his AA meetings with him. I always liked going to my dad's meetings because there would always be coffee and donuts to eat, even though sometimes it was a little boring to have to hear people talk about how they didn't drink anymore, which is why I didn't understand why my dad had died from alcoholism. My family told me that he had died bleeding inside and the doctors couldn't help him. But I didn't understand because my father was a recovering alcoholic. I always heard my mom say my dad was sick because he fought in the war. I don't know if this is true, but I know fighting in the war didn't affect the way he treated me. He was always good to me, but today my dad died and now he's gone.
Hi, I'm Kevin Smith Kirkwood. Jen Cody. Diane Phelan. Adam Heinkin. Katie Fonfel. Mother Lewis Saint. Nathan Lee Graham. And I stand. I stand. I stand. I stand. I stand. I stand, I stand with Broadway's babies against racism. 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 And I hope you will as well. I'm just, I'm so proud of, of, you know, this organization and what's been created. And I know the importance of reaching out to every community and um, bringing the arts to every community. And I know how necessary it is to have the arts in schools and what it can do for a person and a human being. I don't think that you're completely um, a full person without art in your life. And so I'm just, I'm so proud of all of you guys for being a part of it, for being teachers, for being advocates, for creating it. And um, I'm grateful that you had me on. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Misty. This has been a dream come true for us to have you uh, be with us. A dream. Hi, my name is Lydia Ramirez, and I'm the Enrichment and Partnership Coordinator at the Bronx Academy of Letters in the South Bronx. We're located in the poorest congressional district in the United States and have been hit the hardest by COVID. Broadway's Babies is one of our most important partners because they have helped fill the gap of arts programming at our school by bringing leading Broadway performers to run after-school programs of dance and music. Through the arts, kids learn to focus, collaborate, and communicate, helping them become leaders in their own destiny. Broadway's Babies has brought some normalcy in these not-so-normal times by continuing their after-school arts program virtually. Please help make that happen. Please donate below. BAL needs you. The South Bronx needs you. The arts community needs you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm 
Come see, see, see.